Hello YouTubers, so today we're going to do a video on making the roses part of um, the table dressings that we were going to look at and the bouquets that I made to go on the top of the cakes. So these are all completely homemade and I will tell you how to do them without using a mould and whatnot, which is actually how I made half of these was without a mould and the other half was with a mould. So we're going to look today at making buds, a quarter rose, three quarters and a full rose and I'll show you how to do that very very simply. Um, it doesn't have to be mega 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 involved, it's as involved as you want it to be. These are a little bit dusty look. Um, they're as involved as you would, you would want it to be. So this is what we're going to have a go at making today. So I thought I'd just show you some single roses. So I'm just going to pop those to one side. So in the table dressings, I did have, I got a big rose here and I got a rose here because I like doing opposites. So two roses, two jasmine if you can see that, white one and a dark one, a calla lily in the middle and then you've got all of your, your uh, greenery sort of side of it which is very, very important as well. So that's what was in the table dressing. So the cake dressings which this is a small one off a small cake and if you want to see the other ones the bigger ones then please do go on to some of my previous videos because it shows you how I make all of them I will be doing a video next on making the lavender it's very very simple it doesn't have to be awkward I know that it looks and you think oh my goodness but actually it's very simple to do we've already done the um, sweet pea I will be doing one for the freesia we're doing the rose now and I will do one for this. This is my first attempt at doing some um, mm, 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 blossom, um, which I was very, very pleased with and they, they look really good. Um, someone to look for and find on YouTube is Nicholas Lodge. Now I've got a fair amount of his um, moulds only recently, but before that I haven't it's been a you know I, I've sort of managed with printouts and, and just plain cutters um, he is an amazing man do go on there and have a look what I find is I look at what he does and then I feel like I do and put my own sort of touch on it which makes it easier for what I can do so he is definitely worth looking at but for the here and now let's have a little look now I have made a previous video with roses um, which obviously first videos are always cringe worthy to watch but it was okay it wasn't too bad at all but obviously now we're gonna have a look at doing them like this so there's a smallish one they're like quarter ones there's a little bud down there if you can see that one little white one i like buds white because they're like um they're innocent they're young they're i don't know i just like i'm funny like that but there's one that's slightly wider open so slightly bigger than that one okay so we will be do this one now and then we'll have a next video will be on making lavender then the next one will be freesias and then we'll do these ones okay because these are, are quite difficult i might not show you these ones exactly but it will be something along those lines to show you how to make a blossom the colors you do it in the colors you choose to do it and the centers are up to you because there's so many different variants and so many different colors on the inside it just makes it easier for really for what whatever it is that you want to do with your little, my little they come off the sweet peas they're supposed to be um curled like this but i find they never hold shape 100 percent, but they still look nice sort of hanging so that's off the sweet pea which was a, a previous video which we released so go back and have a look at that hit that subscribe button folks because then you'll never miss another video that i release um i haven't forgotten about my dragon glasses we're going to do those um but at the moment i seem to have found a niche for for making flowers um the the bouquets i made for my daughter's wedding cake which was three tier getting bigger each time and adding in different flowers as we went um i really enjoy i have to say this was a first attempt not made a, a rose before well, other than that other one before um, certainly not done any of these sort of things, no sweet peas or nothing like that. So I've I've learned as I've gone and I hope that because of the way I show you how to do it, you'll be able to do the same. So, right, let's get on them. So, I've rolled my, my um, clay out 
I do two because you'll not get it all on one. On this is the, the not the thinnest setting on the pasta machine, but this the next one in because you don't want it really thin because you it will just be so floppy you'll never be able to work with it. I then went on and did if you can see that the center of the rose which has to be just a tear teardrop shape. I put some in some liquid clay, popped the wire in, and then I baked them because. Every time I made um, made a, a rose, what I ended up doing was squashing the bottom down because I don't like a big bottom on them, and then it, it was pulling it all off, and it was getting and it was just driving me mad. So I've done a handful of them. I've done some orange ones, pink ones, white ones, some really deep red ones. Sorry about the noise. My puppy is eating a bit of wood, um, and I put them all in the oven. So I've got a handful of these now all ready to go. So I do recommend you do this. Now this pink is just some that I've, I've sort of had sitting around. So I thought I'd have a go and do it. It's quite bright. Um, but I, I quite like that. So what I will do is we'll have another video where I'll do some dusting. And we'll have a look at dusting some of the colours at some point. Um, and some of the roses and everything and see what, what it's like for me and then I hopefully pass it on to you. I try to find the easiest ways of doing things and with hope that I can pass it on to you and, and it works for you. So right here we go. So to make the roses, the ones out of the bouquet what I actually used was a, a printout of four, uh, four rose petals. You can get them off the internet very cheap and free and without copyright. Print it off, cut it out and then I laid them on the top here. I would show you, but I can't find them. I have still got them, but I just... It's been such a pickle in the house where we've had new baby been born, um, new grandson, and um, the wedding and everything. I, everything's still sort of been put away, but not in places that I would normally put it. So, if I find it, I will to show you it. But for the here and now, I can't... I don't know where it is. Um, so, I printed them off, pop them on here, and I cut them out. Now, I do... Three of each, um, depending on the size you want. If you want a very large rose, then obviously you want to do four. But I, I like the size of four, um, three on each. Now, here's some cutters that I didn't even realise I had for single petals. Now, if you look, I've written on mine what they are, but it's rubbed off, look, because it was with a Sharpie, but it's not, um, not stayed on. Um, the, here, you've got five petals. Now, that's fine. But I don't like this one. It's too small for what I want. And the way to usually measure your centres is to put it against here. And if it doesn't come out past the top point here, then it's OK. But if you can see, that goes right past it. So the little one's going to be no good for us today. Now, the next one is still too small. But I'm going to use it and I'm just going to sort of stretch it. And um, No, we're not going to use it. We'll use these three. And with these three, we'll figure out what we're going to do. So I'll probably do six of this size and treat one, three lot of little ones and then or maybe f use five. We'll see how we go. Um, but these three, but generally as a rule, I would use four. OK, I would use these four. But obviously, because I've pre-made my tips, my my centres, my, the, the middle of it, um, it's now made it so that I can't use that one. So we're going to improvise. And that's all about the way of crafting is improvisation. Everybody can manage that. So it's just seeing what happens and seeing what works for you. OK, so let's get get down to it then. So we're going to cut out very neatly three of each. So I'm going to do six of this one. Like I say, I'm going to make one extra with because I was going to do five. But I'm going to do six to make sure I have enough. Now, some people wiggle it about, some people don't. I don't like wiggling it because it distorts the shape. And especially when it comes to using clay. When you're using fondant and things like that, it probably would work perhaps a little bit better um, if you wiggled it about. But right now, I try not to put... Um, if I don't have to use corn flour, I'd rather I didn't. Because, so if you saw that then, that's not a massive wiggle. That's just a, a gentle... Um, so push it down and just a, just a, I don't know what you'd say, it's not a wiggle, just move slightly. So, right, there's my six of those, so I'm going to do three of this kind, this size. Okay, now I always work on a tile, because I know that, working on a tile, I know that I can get 
pretty much everything I want to get on there and it doesn't stick okay so we're going to pop that one there so that's those three and then we've got big ones so I knew I wouldn't get it all on one tile so I've done two the bigger ones are obviously quite large so I do have um, a Nicholas Lodge one which I have used a couple of times but I need to um, I need to go back and do it a little bit more before I show you how I do it it's not been the easiest one to get my head round but I have got quite a few of his um, moulds now so I will do a video and show everybody you know what they're like to use but they are generally a uh, majority of the mods are fantastic it's just it's like I've got some that I haven't used yet so I don't want to sort of say that they're fantastic because although I'm sure they will be because they're Nicholas Lodge and, and he really does stop and think about what sort of thing you need to do and how you need to do it and making it easier for beginners as well right okay so I'm going to peel off the outsides there we go we should be left with I did four of these I wasn't sure if we'd use four but I have done four Right, okay, so we're going to push those to the back because we don't want them just yet. I'm going to pull these ones forward and do the same. And hopefully that should just peel back. That's the other thing, Nicholas Lodge does some cutters. I've had a couple of his cutter sets and they are, sometimes when you get cutters they're not sharp enough to cut through the clay. But his go through very, very nice. So that's also something else to remember. Okay. We've got dog hair on that bit, look. Oh, that's annoying. I love having our dogs, but my goodness. I don't know how they're still furry, because I swear I, most of their fur goes into my clay. Right, okay. So we're going to scrape this, like so. And then we're just going to pop them back down. Because obviously when I sort of grab hold of them, I want to be able to just grab them without having a problem. So there's another full one. With another dog hair on it, look, in the clay. There we go. Oh. And that's that one. And there's another dog hair in the clay. There we go. And then the last three, which I'm going to peel off now. Now, I will use corn flour because it's, it's definitely a vital thing for using clay. Like so. So here it is. I have mine in a, a shaker pot, which works very well. But in order to keep nice and clean and tidy, I use and put it in the lid. Then I can just dip my fingers in if I have to or I need to. Now, up until recent weeks, I was using um, air dry clay, uh, uh, liquid clay, to stick all my stuff together. However, what I have found is if you've got something you need to stick together imminently, so like I've been doing nuts and berries and things like that, if you stick them together with the liquid clay, it doesn't go hard until you put it in the in the cooker. I was going to say the washing machine then. Put it into the cooker. So it makes it very difficult and it slides about. So I've started using PVA glue for things that need just a gentle... Hey! Just a gentle... Um, so it sticks together sort of thing. The other thing is I'm horrendous for is using... Um, using brushes to put my liquid clay onto and then not cleaning my brush and my husband keeps telling me off. So I've started using these. I bought these a long time ago, never really used them for much. Um, a lot of people use them and find them very easy to use but I struggle. But they're great for putting on clay, uh, PVA glue onto clay. So there's our PVA glue which we'll be using in a bit. Now we want to make sure that these edges are nice and soft. So that's the first thing we're going to do. It's softened down the edges. So with a cheap wall tool, this came free with a magazine, I think, years and years and years ago. An awesome piece of kit, amazing. Um, we're going to start with the small ones. Now, I will put down a little bit of clay. Please do excuse my my um, sponge. It's been it's billions of years old, um, and it's been used and used and used, so... The top is actually quite clean, but I don't like this side because everything sticks to it. It's probably really good for fondant, if I remember rightly, because that's what it's used for. Um, but for me, with the clay in the back here, and I use it to stand my stuff in as well, which is what all the holes are. Terrible. One day I get a new one. Right, so we're going to pick up a small one. We're going to pop it on here. 
and we're going to pop a little bit of so to just dip your finger in just round the edges if it gets too much on there wipe it off on the sponge and just round the edges so with the ball tool you're going to just gently go round like so it slides about I know because you've put cornstarch on it but don't panic about that so there's your point so try and keep it or you could do it in bits like so the other thing I've got is a veiner a rose veiner from Nicholas Ke um, Lodge I nearly said Nicholas Cage what is the matter with me um, and that is very very good putting obviously your veins and all that sort of thing on your petals but I didn't want to do that today I want to show you the most cost effective way of you making a great rose so right there we go so it's just a little bit thinner on the edges that's all you're you're looking for with a little bit of a a, a wave like so so we're going to put that one back and then we're going to get the next one so we're only going to do three to start with I think three is a good number for us right now and then we're going to stick them on oh come back it's trying to run off there we go okay so again do it in bits if that's what works for you or you can roll it like so if we can keep hold of it like so I like to do it in one one sweep if I can remember you're not sort of thinning out the middle too much although you can put some do thin it out a little bit and if you wanted it to bow inwards really you could just go around that bit there look and that just gives it a little bit of a bow shape like that and there we go and I'm going to do the same with that one because we we did do that with this one the other one so it makes them so they look like they match so it just gives it a nice a concave in the middle sales calls okay there we go so it's just slightly concaved in the middle so the next one my little bonnie monkey she's spread wood everywhere now we go to bed and get splinters up our bottoms okay so just hold on to it if you need to go round it like I say it, it does make cornflower does make it quite slippy and then you're going to roll it around in the middle just to make that nice concaved in the middle if you've got a bit that's slightly stuck out like I have done here, don't worry too much about it because the bottom half of the leaf the petal is what's going to be stuck on. But you can if you wanted to just if you just sweep towards it, it will sort of get rid of it a little bit. Because these are going to be slightly larger than what they were on the um on the cutter when we cut them out. Right, so now we're gonna pick up that was close and then dropped all that. And we're gonna pop a little bit of uh PVA glue on there on the tile. We're going to get our blue tool and we're just going to put this up here. Now I do it on this bit first because this first bit, bit that we put on is you, it's designed so that you don't see this central bud. Okay, so we're going to mix it like wrap it right round and then the next one will come on and we'll wrap that round as well now a lot of people and the, probably the correct way of doing it is to tuck it under the left side and have the right side stuck out but today I'm going to show you how to make an easyish one okay so just to get rid of the lines just rub it in your fingers and then there's a point at the bottom and that's going to just go down nicely just and then wrap it round so wrap the, the base round the bottom and then try and wrap it around so that you can see hardly any of the the inside bit there look that's it just keep working on it because the clay will stretch in accordance to where it needs to be so the theory is that you don't see any of the inside bit there so just like that and then just keep working on it be patient and it will go if it folds a bit at the bottom it doesn't matter you're not going to see the bottom of it anyway and we're probably going to cut it off in all honesty depending on how much actually comes out and that you can actually see okay so I'm going to zoom you in a little bit 
Okay, so that's what we've got now. Looking cooking. So that's... See how it's only very, very slight in the very top there? You can't see inside the petal. So now we're going to get our glue again, PVA glue, and we're just going to wipe it now like halfway round. Now I prefer to put it on this side rather than on the petal because I find it easier to manoeuvre the petal into place and where I want it. About two thirds up, let's say, on this one. Because it's the further out you go with the petals, the more you're going to want the petals to open out. Okay, so we're going to get the next one that we did. Again, give it a gentle rub, and then that gets rid of any line marks in it. There we go. Oh, and then we're going to stick this one halfway between. So there's your point of your petal, and there's your your straight up there look okay so that's going to go in the middle roughly of where that one was and we're going to wrap it round like so like that and then just tuck your edges in tuck it down the bottom now clay will stick to clay naturally so if it hasn't got any glue on it don't panic it will probably stick to itself anyway now most people at this point would say right Keep the left, uh, the right side open so you can tuck the next petal into that right side. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you how to do it without doing that. Okay, so now you've got that next bit. So it's you can see already it's, it's nice and enclosed and it's going to be like a little bud. So in the next one, we're going to put some more PVA glue on it. See, the PVA glue will dry. So that's, I think, the most important part, whereas the liquid clay wouldn't it won't dry um, until it goes into the oven. So PVA glue, and I found it not to be a problem, it doesn't distort or change anything really on the, the clay. So, just so you know, I haven't had any problems. Right, so I'm just gonna go round a little bit more, because I, I do, sorry about that, it's my Rottweiler, who is bathing on my bed in the sunshine. It's nice and warm coming through the window. That's the life, I suppose. Okay, so we're going to use this last one now that we did. So I'm going to roll it in the fingers. Now, there was the next size up that we... All right, let's get this one on first. So point straight in the middle between there. As close as you can get it. Okay, so we're going to wrap that one around now at the top. Okay. And then just tuck it in at the bottom, like so. Now, as a habit, I've got of doing that with my fingers because when you get the PVA glue on there, I don't like the feel of it on my fingers. So, plus it gets all like um, glooped up because it's got corn flour on there as well. Now, if your wire's too long, just bend it, bend it upwards, and then you, you can bend that back down later on. So if you can see that now, we've got the start of the rose really starting to come on now. Okay. And that's the other nice thing with clay and PVA glue. You can move what you've put on, see how it slides. Okay, so now I can see that this is just closed up slightly inside. So just make sure everything's where it should be. Perfect. Now there's your bud. Now that's what I would do generally as a bud. So the white ones that I've I've done in the bouquet, that would be fine. Make a calyx and pop it on the bottom. Now most people out of fondant don't bother with the calyx because they snap off. But if you're doing it in clay, we don't generally have a problem with the um, with the calyxes. Okay, so I'm going to thin that down a little bit more and pop that in that big hole there, so you can see. Right, so we've now got the next size up. Well, it's not the act. We're going to use the. Yeah, I'm not going to use the little ones. Sorry, I'm so indecisive. Anybody who watches my videos know that uh, I start off with a plan in my head and generally it doesn't ever happen like that. I just kind of um, do what I think at the time. Now I am thinking that we should have those really, shouldn't we? Let's see if we can um, use a ball tool and see if we can get them a different, different shape. 
Okay, so we're going to go around the outside like we did before. And then in the middle we're just going to go, because we want to make them a bit bigger, really. So it's about stretching the clay. See, I'm chasing it around my board. It's very annoying. But, see, that works really well. I think that's probably bigger than what's up there now. It doesn't matter if it's not much bigger. It really doesn't matter. It's just as long as it's a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm happy with that one. So there's one. There's another small one. Now, naturally, as we move up to the next size, and we do the same on the next size and, and thin out the edges, it's going to get bigger as well. And so is the bigger ones are going to get bigger. Okay. Now, I've done four of the bigger ones. It depends when I get to the end. If it looks like I need another one, then we'll use it. But if not, generally, I use three per three per um, sizing. Everything's done in threes. Apart from when I build up my table dressings and whatnot, I like to do those in pairs, really. So each side is, I'm very regimental with that because I think it looks better. Um, we made one that was a little bit on the um, different side, like so you've got things popped all over the place, and we didn't actually like it. So I am I'm sort of picked it from, because I'd wrapped it all with florist tape. Um, and then we decided that if you put one rose one side, it doesn't matter if it's a different colour, you can put another rose the other side, but it had to be a rose. So that's just something really, it's just preference of what you like. So I'm very, most things have to be in threes if I make something. And you, you're building generally, a, we're doing some um, reefs for Christmas. But generally if you're going to put a flower on there, I do like a, a three or odd petals. So three petals um, per one. Hello, what are you doing little bonbon? My little puppy. Little monkey pup. Okay, so we're going to do that. Yeah, like I said, it just depends on what you're doing. Um, but generally, I do like to do odd numbers when it comes to putting petals and leaves on them. Leaves on the roses that should be odd. So you can do a five leaf that goes up the middle, and then one you've got one in the middle and one each side, and one each side, and one each side. Oh, you're completely off camera. I do apologise. Let me zoom out. Oh. Um, or, um, I forgot what I was saying. Now, generally leaves, you do three, five, seven, nine. It's entirely up to you. Right, so they look good now. Let's just get rid of that line there. Look if you can see that. Okay. So, the next one we're going to put on is this side, if you can see. There, look. So, we're going to put some glue on. Now, this time we're only going to go two-thirds of the way up, because we want it to start um, sort of starting to, to release and open up at the top. So, that's the first bit we've done then. That's the bud. I mean, you could paint, the, uh, squirt this directly onto your clay if you wanted to, but I like it like that. Okay, so the first one we're going to do, we're going to put it between, always between the last, um, the last petals you put on. So give it a rub, gets rid of any lines. Let's just turn that around, and then we're going to pop it on there. See how it's that little bit taller? So flip it forward. And just tuck it round like so okay so then just gently open it you don't want it too far because it will it, you're still sort of on the next stage of the bud so down these sides I'm just going to put some glue and down this side I've got a line there of something it looks like green in my clay that will disappear don't panic about that because you won't see it when I put the next petal on. Okay. Next one. Just give it a rub. Okay. So this is getting bigger now. So put half and half. So like the there. Move it about if you need to. Just make sure it's sort of loosened off a little bit. It's not tight, tight around the top. Like so. And then just sort of pull it out a little bit. It can be a little bit on the fiddly side, 
but just be patient reapply glue if you need to okay and then you've got your, your tools and that just sort of tuck them in where need be if you need to apply some more glue do so oh that's folded over now look there we go like that It is, all honesty, probably easier to use a brush with the glue. I'm not going to lie, it's a little bit more finesse. Which, actually, I'm going to change in a minute to a, a brush. Because it's easier to, to apply it more evenly. Okay, so that's where I've got to so far. And then we're just going to put this last one on. Let me get a brush. There we go. There we go. Right, so we're going to put a little bit more glue on here. Right, let's try the brush. I'll show you the brush technique now. Some people might like the brush better, I don't know. So, yeah, it does go on a lot better, look. More evenly, you could say. And it brushes down the, the one below it as well. So, down underneath. So, two-thirds up. The other thing as well, because the PVA dries clear, it doesn't matter if you don't get a leaf, a petal on top of it. It really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to run that bit. And then I'm going to grab this one. Rub it in my hands. Get rid of any line marks if I can. There we go. And then between the two, if you look it up, it's going to go between that and that. Okay. Try and make it the same height, like so. Otherwise, it'll look a bit peculiar if you've got different heights on the, that level. So just tuck it round. That's it. And it's starting to really sort of look like it's opening now. Okay. There you go. So that's a bigger bud than what we did just now. Like so. I like to curl mine down a little bit. I'm going to put a big curler. A nice curling on there. That sounded very unpleasant, didn't it? I do apologise, but what I meant was it's nice and curled. I like it to, I like mine to curl down like that. So just gently pull on it and it just gently comes down. Okay. So the next ones we're going to do are these ones these are the next size so I'm going to do exactly the same as what we did before thin the edges out I'm not going to go too mad on the inside though because I don't want them to be massively bigger you can offer them up to see how close they are like I say it's probably not the correct way of doing a rose but the other way is quite a fiddly job so it's a case of you have to leave one side open to tuck it in before you move around to the next for me that that was it, it, it's very difficult situation if you've got the patience to sit there which i have got the patience i just found this way was very easy and anybody could have a go at doing this no. um anybody could have a go at doing this and it's something that anybody could do which if you look at all my videos that's something that i pride myself in is for any level any stage and they look great so right, let's just do this one see so if you can do it in bits or you can go around in one go sometimes the tools won't let you go because there's a bit of sticky clay that's all right don't worry do it in bits it's it's okay there's a line on my this is off my pasta machine this is because i didn't clean my pasta machine before i put the pink through it there's green on that one if you can see that just a slight rim okay and then very gently just to get rid of those lines okay there's that one and then last one okay and we're going to go around again. Now this is going to take it to a half, um, a half rose. 
once I've put these ones on because I don't like making big roses. If you needed and wanted to make a bigger rose, it would be very simple to do. You just need to use larger petals. Now, these are very easy if you wanted to print them out or you could even draw them. They're just a teardrop shape. As long as you get some exactly the same and you need three of them the same for the bottom first one, three for the next one, three for the next one and then three for the next one is how I generally do it. There we go. Right. So back to glue. I'm going to glue. So that's the last one put on. So I'm going to do it here. Mm. No, actually, I'm going to do this one here. So again, you really want to go about start going. Well, I've probably gone too high up there, actually. I have. Um, about halfway up is probably better because now you're starting to allow the petals to come out so just slightly you don't want them too far out so let's have a look so offer it up just to check the size in yeah I'm happy with that size and then I'm going to put it here like so wrap the bottom round and then start letting it sort of fall out a little bit if you can see that let me move those out of the way and then you might see it better on the bench the back so that one's starting to come out ooh, starting to come out a little bit so the next one we're going to do is going to come this side we're going to keep working around to the right is the way i like to do it and then we're going to pinch the petals in a minute and, and i'll show you how to get the shape in Okay, so I'm going to go halfway up this time. I put it too high up last time. But like I say, the PVA dries clear. So don't worry if you've made the mistake like I just did. Okay, there you go. Mistakes do happen to everybody, even people that are doing videos. Sometimes it can take three or four cuts before you get one that you're, you're sort of happy with. Um, and then other times it just goes really well and according to plan. And you get one that's that's really good and you're very pleased with. So try and keep it as high as you can. So the petal, if you move it up from the bottom, because your petal's not quite big enough, like our one's not quite big enough there, it's not the same sort of size. Don't worry if it doesn't meet the bottom, because you're going to put a calyx on that. So nobody's going to see the bottom of it anyway. So again, just roll out that side. And then go along and just tuck it in at the bottom. See how it's not quite met the bottom there? I don't know if you can see that. It doesn't matter. We'll figure that out when we put the calyx on. Okay. So that let that one come out, and then we're going to do a pinch, um, pinch and shape in a minute. Okay. We're going to pinch it and shape it. Right. So the last one's going on here. So we're going to put it about halfway up. Don't forget to overlap your petal. Um, so glue it because, like I say, I don't like putting my right one and left right underneath my left and and whatnot it makes it very awkward however i do have like i said in the video earlier nicholas lodge um rose things but i i haven't really had a go at it, at it yet sort of sat down and done it so once i have i will come on and show you how i get on with that so so you want that one bang in the middle of those two again it's not quite that's because we had there we go so just move it up it slides up beautifully with the glue so you've got nothing to worry about and then just tuck it under like so and that almost meets there so that might be a good starting place for my next size so we're going to eke that out right, let's pop a bit more glue under that side there you'll know yourself when you look at something and you think oh right okay i'd like a little bit more glue here a little bit more glue there it's fine, it's fine. You just run your brush underneath it or your blue t sort of rubber tooly thing that like I was using. So it's just whatever works. Okay, so now we're going to, what you need to do is to get the, the edge right is pull down, pull down and we'll work it into the middle. So if you can see like that. So we're going to do it again. So just keep rolling it down. So like that and then it, forms a little point in the middle you can squeeze the little point if you wanted to um, that's entirely up to you so like I say just roll roll just gently pulling it down 
and it comes into a point there look and then just make sure this next ones are out so just use your tools like so and then you've got three mm, I don't know that one. Oh, she's very nosy so then you've got three well, petal shaped ones so the next one I'm going to do is going to start here now we've only got the four big ones left so I think I am going to use all four and that will give you an idea of that's how big I like my roses oh we haven't pulled them off yet have we um, it's just really what what it is that you like let's just move that back there let me move this back a little bit so you can see what we're doing or what I'm doing so I'm just going to pull these up there we go and then I've got my fourth one here if it's a bit rough around the edge just tuck it in clay's very good especially if you haven't used any corn flour on it at this point it sort of st sticks in very well like so that's just as you go now we're going to do exactly the same again uh, I've dropped one on top of the other the thinner you roll your clay out the worse it will become and it becomes so sticky that it will stick to itself like there is no tomorrow so just be aware of that so right going to roll some just round the edges well and over the middle because we want these ones to be quite long because I like, well not long as such, but I like to have them flowing out the edges like so. So that I would class nearly for my size. I'd probably do another one of this size. So perhaps four of them would have been a better, which would have then completed a half size. That would have been a half size for me. So we're going to use this one now. Like I say, if you want bigger ones, it would involve printing out bigger petals. Or you can get tools where you've got uh, cutters, five petals on one, so you cut all five out, it's about that sort of shape, and then you go around and you get them how you want them, push them up like that, and then you fold them in. So they're easier to do if you want to do the, tuck the left under the right. So you put one petal on here, tuck it in, leave this side open. Then the next one will go in there, this side open, next one and so forth. But that's... I mean, like I say, I, I will do a video at some point with one of those to show you that they are, although a little bit on the fiddlier side, um, this is a, a quick, easy learn and you will have no trouble um, making it for a cake or fondant or if you just want one to make and you want to have a go at doing a rose yourself. So it works well. So I like my edges to be quite soft and quite thin. So coming in just a little bit. Because then they will flow, fold over and flow a little bit easier. Oh, now I spread. Some, whoa, it's trying to run off like the first one. <coughs> Put that on there. Let's rub that off, shall we? I'll rub it while I'm there. There we go. Okay, that's coming around. You don't have to push too hard. If you push too hard, it will tear the clay. If you buy um, air dry clay that's very, very, very light, I struggle to use. You might get on very well with it, but you, you can't use the tools and the ball tools with the air dry clay because it tends to rip the clay. So just bear that in mind. If you want to use air dry clay, that's okay. But it's extremely light and it does rip, so... So next one. Oh, it's a glorious day, but I think next week's going to be a little bit on the colder side, which is a bit of a shame, but it is September. Okay, there we go. So 
and round we go. If you do have a go and you, you follow it and you find fairly easy to do, please do leave it down in the, the see if you can post a picture because I'd love to see what you're doing and what your projects are. There we go. So that's thinning out really nicely now, look. Just having a little go at it and just not rushing. If you rush, you'll get it either come out a different shape or you'll tear the petal. If you do end up tearing the bottom part, sort of halfway down at all, you can still use it. Just make sure that that is the one that you put underneath one of the others. It can be one of the first ones you put on. And just so that you, rather than having to cut a load out, another one back out. Here we go. Don't know who that is. Okay. There we go. So we're just thinning out that edge. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to close this door, folks, because I'm fairly sure you don't want to hear the conversation that's going on out there. So it's the same scenario. You try and do a video and you think, right, so you warn everybody not to ring and whatnot, and then it's bang on, somebody rings. Okay. There we go. So this is my last layer now. So if you want bigger, just you've just got to keep working it up each of the layers. But what you need to be doing is making sure that each layer that you put on is bigger each time. Okay. Now, I, I like the smaller roses. I think they look thinner and daintier. So I'm just going to put some glue. Now this one, we, we really don't want to come any more than really halfway. Because you want it to start sort of flapping backwards because it's the next part of the rose. If you want it more of a closed rose, then keep them more closed. Um, but it just depends on what sort of ones that you like to, um, you like what sort of stage the rose is at. Okay, so we're going to do the same again. Whoop. And we're going to pop it there, so right down in the middle there. So whether the join, oh actually, no, hang on. Because we've got a blank spot, haven't we? We've got a blank there, so we're going to put it there instead. Just looking at it, it should have looked at it. Look at it head down, and then you'll realise if you've got a slightly blank spot where they should have another petal, you'll be able to put it on there. But I think we won't have to re glue that on the other side now, so that's perhaps saved us a bit of time. Okay, so whoop, it's gone again. Right, so look at it head on. If you can see, that looks a little bit low, like blanky there. So we're going to pop one right there in the middle. Now that's tucked down the bottom. Try and get as straight as you can. And you're just going to tuck it round. Okay, now that's quite big coming off of there, but that's by the time you've rolled in your petal and you've made it look right, you're going to, I don't like that, it's a little bit long. So same scenario, same as if it's shorter, put it further down. It doesn't matter. Like, that's better. That's a, a better size. It fits better. We can cut any excess off in, late, in a bit. But for the here and now, that fits 100% better. So I'm just going to roll that under. Remember? You don't generally roll them until you're finished. But then if I, I feel like I want to put anything else, then I can. So we're going to go to the right. So I'm going to put some more of this on there, look. Some more glue. Like that. Right down to the bottom. Not on the bit that we're going to cut off. Because otherwise it'll go squidgy. Not that it'll matter, it'll just sort of fold back into the clay. So rub it with your fingers, get any prints off of it. Like so. And then we're going to do exactly the same. Keeping it slightly higher like so and then you're going to stick that down wrap it around that bottom bit again it doesn't matter and i'm not going to pinch in that this time I'd, i just wanted to see what it would look like and check it was in the right sort of the right height for what i'm wanting so there we go so this next one's going to go here 
I'm glad I did four. It probably wouldn't hurt to do four of each, to be honest, rather than three. It will make it slightly bulkier and it will look, it will look pretty good. So I'm going to do three each on this one, but I am going to put the fourth one on the top, this petal here. And just keep it going round. Okay. So that's that one done. So we're going to look down there and we're going to pop it there. So that fits on there. Like so. And there you go. Like that. And then if you can see the fourth petal looks like it needs to go here, which is great. So we'll just glue the bottom half of this one then. I think it's probably because of that gap we had on the last um, the last round because we only used three petals. It probably would have been better to have used four. Um, however, we have oh, we have made up for it with this this fourth one on the big one, so it should take up that gap. So if you can look at it head on, it needs one like I say just there, which then completes that set of petals. So again, if you wanted a large one, you just go with an extra sort of set of petals, large next size up, and so forth and so forth. So we're going to pinch each side. So just pinch and roll as you go. Pinch and roll until you get sort of there. Now, to do this it, pinch and roll, it's going to make it look like a, quite as low it's gone over a little bit. But I like that. That's my personal choice. You might like one that doesn't look like it's um, you know it, it's still sort of fairly closed or or whichever you like to do but I do like a one that looks like it's sort of very well out if you see what I mean and done and and then just take it up and under now you can hold it quite easily and then just use your tool and just make sure there's nothing being sort of if you can see that nothing being squashed no none of the others being squashed just gently tease them out and put that one down look and pull that one up it's there every rose is different you'll never find one that is exactly the same so that is definitely the way forward and then all I do is I like to push it up at the bottom and make sure it's it's nice and tight now that's the clay that we weren't going to use see it just sort of coming off like so now if you're doing this in fondant not many people like I say uses a calyx um, because they're very, very hard to use if that's fondant and they do tend to snap off. But clay wise, I would always, I, I like the, the, the calyxes on them. I'm not going to put one on for this one right now because it's going in a, um, I'm going to use this one in a, like a set like the table dressings that I've done. And you won't be able to see the calyx in there anyway. So, so this, I'm just going to, you can always go along as well and put a little bit more glue here and there, here and there. Um, don't forget it dries clear so it's, even if you can see it right now it, you won't be able to see it when it's dried and then just tuck up any little extra bits that you like but generally the centre look is where it's meant to be or how you like it how I like it certainly so there you have it ladies and gentlemen oh my goodness this sounds like a turkey at the front door. because we've always laughed and said my mum walks like a turkey my children have sort of labelled her, which sounds very annoying, but actually it's quite amusing. She finds the funny side of it just as well. And our doorbell came and it had a turkey noise on it. So my kids took full advantage and that's what they didn't put the turkey noise on. So now we'll never miss the doorbell because we know she's there. Maybe not her, but certainly a delivery. So I am sorry about that. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that's how to do a rose. Like I say, if you want to put more on there, you can just put more on there. Don't fold these over quite so much, keep them sort of up more a little bit. And then it will um, you allow you to put some more petals which will come out this side and so forth. Do the four petals, not three. I wish I'd done the four. We all make mistakes sometimes, but it's a nice little neat rose. There's no mistakes had there, and then the... the that serious i think that's a beautiful little rose and i'm very very pleased with it so like i say the calyx is a cutter you just cut them out in green 
and then thin the edges when you've got them like we did with the rose not too much though because you don't want to distort the shape and then when you get them just pop them straight up underneath you can flip it upside down like this and fit it on and then that hides the shape here and any any bits like I've got here but that's if you're going to use them singularly I like to use that I'm going to put that in a, a table dressing of some sort so there you go thank you very much for watching hit that subscribe button because we're going to do lavender next um, and show you how I've sat and how I figured out how to do the lavender um, and we'll go from there so thanks for watching hit that subscribe button and I'll speak to you soon